Konami also treads into sequel territory with Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. Although we found the game to be a disappointment, we couldn't help but be sucked into the game. The game expands dramatically as you find new passageways and secrets within Dracula's castle. We think the game is fun, but again, way over height. This is a traditional 2D platform experience with no in-game cinemas or anything to set it apart from previous Dracula outings. The unification of side-scrolling action and character-building RPG elements is unique and impressive, but almost unnoticeable in terms of the effect on gameplay. The challenge is very high. We got far into the game, but still felt far from the end. The different areas of Dracula's castle are well-designed, and in many cases, a sight to see. The artistry and detail is readily apparent, particularly in the backgrounds. The setting is very convincing, as everything looks Romanesque or Gothic. Besides the overdone side-scrolling nature of the game, we also have a minor complaint about one aspect of the game's control. You can't jump in the middle of a swing. Think about that for a moment. If you're standing still and you swing your whip, you can't jump until the whip has come all the way back to you. Now that's ridiculous, folks. Ridiculous and frustrating. I mean, really, that is one annoying flaw. So much for realism. The Castlevania series often sports slightly stiff control, and this game is no exception. However, we should say that the control only feels stiff in that instance. Otherwise, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a pretty decent game. You won't not like it, but it won't make you sing out loud either. Then again, no game does that. The bottom line is, unlike Crash Bandicoot 2, Castlevania does not take old school gameplay and put it in a flattering 3D format. Instead, Castlevania just creates more of the same, but enjoyable more of the same.